Erev Shabbat Shalom Rabotai, we are continuing with the Mishnah Yumi Masechet Shabbat, we are up to Perek Yudzayin Mishnah Bet, today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana Aranbay, Ben Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. As an introduction to today's Mishnah, we know that an object that is used mainly for activities prohibited on Shabbat, for example, a hammer or saw, they are muktze under the category of Klisha Melachto Yisro, a utensil whose work is forbidden. However, unlike other muktze object, objects which may not be moved at all, items belonging to this category may be moved for certain purposes. One may move them in order to use them for an activity that is permitted on Shabbat or because one needs a space they are occupying what we call Mitzor Kufo or Mikomo, but one may not move them for their own protection. So for example, to take them out of the sun into the shade, Mechama Litzel, or to safeguard them from theft. So the Mishnah gives examples of using items of this category for a permitted task. Notel Adam Kurnas Lefatsebot Eta Egozim, a person may take a hammer to crack nuts. The kardom lachtoch et devela, an axe to cut a cake of figs, which the commentators explain are dried figs that were pressed into a round cake that was thick and hard. Migera ligrof ba et gvina, a saw to slice thick cheese. Magrefa ligrof ba et girogrot, a shovel to scoop up dried figs from the bottom of a barrel. Et rachat vet a mazleg la tetalav la katan, a winnowing shovel which was a box-like shovel that has two low sides and a long pole attached to its third side. It's used to scoop up th uh, uh, threshed grain and tossed into the air so that the light chaff is blown away while the grain kernels fall down. It's what we call the melecha of zoe, winnowing. So a winnowing shovel or a pitchfork to put food on it for a child. So for example, the commentators explain the child is on the far side of a stream that he cannot cross. So in order to pass food to him, one puts the food in a winnowing shovel or on the end of a pitchfork and extends it over the stream. Eta kush veta karkar litchovbo, a spindle, which was is a stick that is narrow at one end and wide at the other, used for spinning thread, or a weaver's pick, which is a pointed tool used to separate and strain the warp threads in the weaving process, which this activity is forbidden under the melachav misach, warping. You can use those to pierce fruit that is on a plate in order to pick up the fruit. Machad shelyad litol botakots, a hand needle, which is a standard needle used for sewing clothes, to remove a splinter in one's skin. Veshel sakaim liftoch botadelet, or a sack maker's needle, which is a long, thick needle used to sew up sacks to open a door by picking its lock. Now, although all these items are muktzah because their main use is forbidden, one may move them on Shabbat for a task that is permitted. And that is in Rabotayav Mishnah Bet, Mishnah Gimel now continues, after olives are harvested, they are stored in a vat where they are left to soften before being pressed. A hollow wooden cane is used to turn over the olives in the vat to check whether they are ready for pressing. This Mishnah, Mishnah Gimel, discusses the status of such a cane in regards to Tuma and Muqtza. Kaneh shel zetim. This is the law of a hollow wooden cane that's used for checking olives. If there is a knot at its end, which prevents oil inside its hollow from dripping out, it is able to become tameh, because a wooden object that can serve as a container is a utensil, a kli, with, with respect to tumah. When the commentators explain bamboo canes and the like are divided into several sections along their length with a knot at each joint between one section and the next. The cane is hollow apart from the knots. If a length of cane in which there is a knot is used to turn over the olives, the knot will prevent any oil caught in the cane from dripping out. The oil in the cane can then be examined to determine whether the olives are ready for pressing. But again, that would make it uh, subject, that would make it considered a utensil with respect to Tumah. Vim lav and mekabel Tumah. But if it does not have a knot at its end and therefore cannot hold oil in its hollow, it is not considered a utensil, it cannot become Tameh. And the commentators explain only people Food and kalim utensils can become tameh. A wooden instrument is not deemed a clear utensil in this context unless it has a cavity in which liquid or other items can be held. Therefore, although the cane discussed here has a useful purpose, namely turning over the olives in a, in a vat, it is a utensil with respect to tumah only if it has a knot which makes it capable of being used as a container. In either case, it may be moved on Shabbat because as far as the laws of muqtza are concerned, it is a utensil regardless of whether it has a knot. 
the fact, the comment is explained, the fact is that the cane is a utensil since it is intended to be used to turn over olives. In regards to the laws of muqse, there is no requirement that a wooden utensil be capable of holding things. The cane is therefore not muqse, even if it lacks a knot at its end. And that is on the of today's Mishnah Yomi. Everybody should have a Erev Shabbat Shalom. Amen v'amen.